I want to welcome you all here today to this first seminar of the Young Historians Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Many of you all would have been wondering, what is this organization about, right? This group, we want to encourage and appreciate the, cult, the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. We want you to appreciate the history of Trinidad and Tobago. We will be organizing seminars similar to this in North Trinidad, South Trinidad, even Tobago. We will also be giving advice on careers. Too often you hear about what will I do in history? Will I end up just being a teacher? Like you've done a bad thing. <laughs> right? You just got a raise recently. So, too often we hear that all the scholarship winners are science students. In my time, who got the President's Medal? Those who do it, maths, physics, chem, bio. The history students were those who were footballers and cricketers. Those who were not too bright. But we have to get rid of that stigma. You know, every year we would hear about the maths Olympiad. Why not have a history Olympiad? Right? So we could choose some of the best history students from around the world and have them debate topics and discuss issues. So this Young Historians Association of Trinidad and Tobago, we are here to rework the image of history. We want to make history something interesting, something lively. The motto, the slogan is the past is alive. I want you all to go and check the website. I want you all to email us, tell us what you think. I want you all to spread the message to your friends. You are like disciples, spreading the good news about what history is. Remember who our first prime minister was? A historian. If you don't know your history, you will not understand your future. You will not understand the present. <coughs> Too often, we are bombarded by the American culture. Many of you all, you would know about Usher. You know about Britney Spears. You know about J-Lo. You're following up Jet Li movies. But you don't know a lot of the historical personalities from Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. And that is very unfortunate. You watch HBO. You're watching Cinemax. You buy the DVD shop every week. Some of you all every two days. But you wouldn't watch the History Channel. You wouldn't watch Discovery Channel. Why? So you see what I'm trying? I'm not saying stop watching HBO and Cinemax, you know. I am not saying stop following the American culture. You all go ahead. But you must appreciate history. You must appreciate your culture. You must appreciate the importance of history in your life. This is what this group wants to do. You might wonder, the title Young Historians. Is it for people under 18 years? Is it for just secondary school students? It's for everybody who have a passion about history. So you could be old and you're interested about history, and we encourage you to join the organization. Right? No membership fee for now. So it is very important that you go and tell other people to come out to these seminars. I want to thank everyone here today, particularly the teachers, members of the public for coming out here today. Teachers have a very important role in making history an interesting subject. A lot of times when students are in Form 3 and they have to choose subjects, they would say, well, I'm not doing history because she teaching that subject or he teaching that subject and it's boring. So teachers have a very important role in making this subject interesting, making it come alive. The past is alive and teachers have a very pivotal role in ensuring that history comes alive. Two weeks ago, the Minister of Education, Hazel Manning, said that history would soon be a compulsory subject, just as mathematics and English. But I want to ask you this. 50 years ago, 60 years ago, history should have been a compulsory subject. Too often we see small classes at CXC and Cape. Some schools not offering history at all at Cape because nobody wants to do it. Everybody wants to do MOB, accounting, science subjects. And everybody forget about history. History is like an outside child these days. Right? They're treating history with scorn. So I want you all now to go and start encouraging your younger students in Form 1 and Form 2 to try and do this history. Right? And history is very relevant today. Look at the politicians today, the politics. They're talking about two parties having to come together. COP and UNC Alliance, and they're talking about the past. What happened when they were unified? They want to defeat the PNM. But I want you to ask yourselves today, 
Why can't the three parties come together? UNC, Alliance, COP, PNF, they come together so we could fight the real enemies, poverty, unemployment, racism, bad health care. So those are the real things we need to put in opposition. The bad roads, the bad health care, those are the things that we're not dealing with. Those are the things politicians have to deal with, right? I don't want to get too political now. So I want to bring you back to the chair, the chairperson for today's proceedings, and I want to thank you all today.